Kentucky State Trooper killed in the line of duty is set to be remembered today. We'll have the latest on his memorial service in a live report. Also on WKYT this morning, a Kentucky house of worship is vandalized and is now the subject of a federal hate crime investigation. How leaders plan to bring the community together after the act of hate. Willie County Schools on lockdown for hours yesterday. We'll tell you why. Plus, no arrests have been made in the case. We'll have the details on WKYT this morning. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. It's your Friday, and we're glad you're along with us here on September 18th on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Thanks so much for joining us. It's Friday. That's great news. We've got a big football game on Saturday, so. Yeah, it's been 28 years since the Wildcats uh, beat the Gators, so let's see what we can do, right? Yeah, Tomorrow we'll see. should be a great game, and uh, the weather is going to be interesting, football like. You know, this time of year you have those changes. Let's check in with uh, meteorologist Jim Caldwell in for Micah this morning. And good morning to you, and we will have some changes coming our way. Today, nothing. It stays nice and quiet with very comfortable temperatures. Out there currently, you're going to find 50s and a few low 60s, but it's more of a 50 degree game out there this morning, guys. But we'll track a little more cloud cover into the area as we go through the day today. It's the only thing different today compared to yesterday. We'll have a more abundant amount of cloud cover trying to stream in. It's out ahead of this next system. Our planner. We go through the day today. By midday, we're around 75, but we will max out around 83. Fantastic end of your work week. We'll take a closer look at those weekend changes coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, see you then. Let's get to the news. Yeah, new this morning. Hundreds are expected to come out today to remember a Kentucky State Police Trooper who was shot and killed in the line of duty this week. Uh, Kentucky Governor Steve Bashir has ordered flags to be at half staff today for Trooper Joseph Ponder, who was shot to death on Sunday night. WKYT's Mark Barber is live at KSP headquarters this morning with details about today's funeral preparations. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. This will be a very difficult day for many as State Trooper Joseph Ponder has given a final hero's farewell. As you just mentioned a moment ago, flags around the state and here at the state police headquarters have been lowered to half staff to honor the fallen trooper. Now, while this will not be an easy day, state police are hoping that many people will show up to honor and celebrate the 31 year old's life and service. Trooper Ponder's funeral begins at 11 o'clock this morning at Severns Valley Baptist Church in Elizabethtown. After that, a motorcade procession will leave from the church at noon. From the church, that procession will go through Radcliffe and will end at the Kentucky Veterans Cemetery in Fort Knox. State police want to see people out for that. They want to see the public lining the streets around this motorcade. Of course, it will be causing a traffic impact as roads will be temporarily closed, but troopers are hoping that people will be patient and will take the time to remember Joseph Ponder. Now, many of us know the story by now. The trooper was shot to death during a traffic stop in Hardin County on Sunday. According to state police, he clocked a 25-year-old man from Missouri driving more than 100 miles per hour. Rather than arrest the man, Joseph Johnson Shanks. Troopers tell us that Ponder tried to help him get a hotel room. Instead, the 25-year-old sped off again, and the next time he stopped, state police say he leaned out his window and gunned the trooper down. Ponder was a Navy veteran and engaged. Now, we have already seen crowds of people honoring him through this past week, and many more are expected to do the same today. Now, state police say as support has been pouring in from people, that's what's been keeping them going strong through this very difficult time. Live in Frankfurt, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you very much. And also new this morning, WKYT has learned some new details overnight about a deadly officer-involved shooting in Rockcastle County. WKYT was the only station that actually aired the story last night. Michelle Chamberlain's at our live desk with more on what we've learned overnight. What can you tell us, Michelle? Yeah, Rebecca, according to police, one man is dead after he fired shots at police officers last night in Rockcastle County. Kentucky State Police is investigating after officers were called out to a home last night for a domestic situation. That's when the situation turned deadly. KSP said it had a vehicle enforcement officer arrive to the home along with a KSP trooper and the Rockcastle County Sheriff's deputy. When they arrived to the home on Doug Hill Road off of US 150 in Broadhead, police say suspect Lawrence Price came out of the home waving a handgun at officers. Police say Price pointed a gun at officers and fired. Police also say shots were exchanged between Price and all three officers. The officers involved were not injured, but Price was hit and later died. After Price and Mr. Price went down, uh, officers rendered aid. 
uh, called for EMS, uh, but Mr. Price died a short time later. The person in the home was not injured. The officers' names have not been released, and the shooting remains under investigation. Keep checking WKYT.com for updates. At the live desk, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. All right, thank you so much, Michelle. An Anderson County family is picking up what's left after a fire ripped through their home. The Anderson News reports that the fire started at a home on Alton Station Road, leaving the family of nine homeless. Firefighters say the homeowner went to the hospital for smoke inhalation. His wife told the paper he was trying to get the family dog out of the home when he breathed in smoke. The firefighter then performed what's called mouth to snout resuscitation on the dog. Right now, firefighters do not know what started the fire. Now, 536 on WKYT this morning. A lockdown at Whitley County Schools caused some serious backups for students and parents and a lot of concern. Authorities say yesterday, right before school let out, a threat in the form of a text message put all schools there on lockdown. That lockdown was lifted just before 430. The Whitley County Emergency Management Director says parents were worried when they learned that they couldn't get their children. We had a lot of parents upset, crying, and we assured them they were safe. Investigators have traced the text to a 14-year-old boy in Campbell County, Tennessee. Police have since spoken to the boy's mother. Emergency management says they had to shut down every county school because of how vague the threat was. So far, no arrests have been made in the case. Louisville's mayor is calling on the community to help clean a Louisville mosque that was vandalized earlier in the week. Louisville police say on Wednesday someone spray-painted references to terrorism and Nazism on the side of the building. The FBI is investigating the incident as a hate crime. Louisville's mayor says he hopes the cleanup will unify the community. The cleanup is scheduled to start this afternoon. A Pulaski County man accused of road rage against a bus driver is expected to be in court today. 31-year-old James Long is charged with 19 counts of kidnapping, 23 counts of wanton endangerment. Investigators say last week Long blocked the bus with his car and wouldn't move. Long's fiance says it was actually the bus driver putting the children in safe in danger. She says the bus had been tailgating them. I felt like my world was coming to an end. And I felt like he shouldn't be taken to jail over trying to protect his children. Long's being held on a ten thousand dollar bond. He's expected to be arraigned today. Well, a Laurel County man charged with murdering his estranged girlfriend is set to be in court today. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office charged Joseph Nestor with murder last week after they found Amber Decker dead behind her home. They say Decker's home was set on fire last Tuesday. Her body wasn't found until days later. A federal appeals court has again denied Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis's request to delay a court order forcing her office to issue marriage licenses. Davis returned to work this week after spending five days in jail for refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Yesterday, Davis's supporters attended a religious rally in Nashville celebrating her stance on gay marriage. Davis herself was not at the event, but her husband and several others spoke at the rally. Y'all just keep praying for me and my wife that God will give us the strength to fight this battle until it's over with. God bless you all. I think that if we had more uh, uh, people like Kim Davis that actually had a backbone to stand up and be governed by conviction instead of uh, licking their fingers, sticking it in the air and seeing which way the wind blows, then America would be a much better place to live. We tried to speak with Joe Davis after the event. He would not go on camera. A Floyd County woman is suing a store after she says she was locked up inside it. Sophia Bentley says employees at the Dollar Tree in Prestonsburg closed down the store and turned off the lights with her still inside it. Bentley says she suffers from panic attacks and is being in, says being in that store caused her emotional distress. I was locked up and couldn't do nothing about it. It's like somebody threw me in a jail and just left me and forgot me. The lawsuit says police responded and helped Bentley get out of the store after about an hour. A new organization is trying to get more women into the Republican Party of Kentucky. State Senator Julie Rack Adams from Louisville launched a new organization called Kentucky Strong. Her goal is to recruit and train women to run for public office. Adams says she created the organization because Kentucky ranks near the bottom in the percentage of women in its legislature. A similar organization called Emerge Kentucky recruits women to run for the office for the Democratic Party.
All right, see where that movement goes. We were an early state to have a woman governor in 1983, but then mm. uh, no statewide uh, office holder since that. Time this morning is uh, 540, or at least at the top level. Uh, a lot more coming up. Let's check live drive traffic this morning, and let's see what is going on out there. And here is a look uh, right now at uh, the Waze map. Not showing a whole lot of action, just some stuff outside the circle there, but a clear commute in Lexington. It's pretty good, and we don't have much fog out there this morning either, which uh, often has been uh, an issue the last yeah, few definitely. weeks. So it looks good uh, for the drive in. A lot more news coming up on WKYT on your Friday morning. The first will soon be on sale, but don't break your checkbooks out just yet. This is a television. It was 8K. Not just any television. We'll have yeah. that story coming up. All right. That's 8K for 100K. That's outrageous. But the resolution will be outrageous. Forecast today is perfect. Tomorrow, it's outrageous again because we got showers and storms. I'll have the latest coming up.